everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and Nina Dobrev will be joining me in just a moment to talk about her new film, Lucky Day. The comedic thriller follows Red, a man who is fresh out of prison who vows to follow the rules until he realizes that he's being hunted down by a psychotic hitman seeking revenge. Take a look. I'm deaf now. Put your hands together for Nina Dobrev. How you doing? I'm good. It's exciting to see the... The poster all blown up. I know, and you're like right front and center on it too. Oh. It is a badass poster, actually. I, I had to pay extra it. to get that spot. It was worth it was worth every cent. <laughs> Thank you. Um there's like a whole French theme happening with you right now. I, I know that you were just in Paris Fashion Week, right? Yes, I was. Yeah. How was that how was that experience? Um it was extremely bloating. <laughs> A lot of croissants, a lot of wine, uh, a lot of bread, a lot of butter. So, yeah, that's why I'm wearing so many layers right now. It's beautiful. Covering though. it all up. <laughs> and I saw you were wearing a shirt that said, um, why have there been no great women artists when you were in Paris Fashion Week while you were there? And I love that because it very much ties us into this character you're playing who is an artist. Was that intentional? You know, it was not. Okay. But I did notice the parallel afterwards, too, because my character is a painter in the film. So... Um, I don't know, art imitates life. Life imitates art sometimes, unintentionally or intentionally. I love that. Let's talk about your character, Chloe. Uh, tell us about her. Chloe is a really strong, sort of hard-headed woman. She is the, she wears the pants in the relationship, mainly because her husband is in jail and somebody has to wear them. Um, well, he gets the, it's called Lucky Day, but it's ironically called Lucky Day because it's probably the worst day in anyone's history. Um, her husband gets out of jail, and he, instead of celebrating, which is what they plan on doing, they end up spending the entire day running away from a mass murderer. As one does. Yeah, I mean, it's a typical Tuesday for me. Yeah, and it is a comedic thriller, so it is all the action and, and drama, but it is so funny, and the dialogue... Again, it's, you know, one of the writers from Pulp Fiction. It's that same sort of vibe where it's, like, over the top and pointed and really witty and smart. Was that fun for you to, like, dig into that? Yes. I mean, it was definitely... I was excited about it because I was a fan of Roger's work from Rules of Attraction to Pulp Fiction. Um, I, I was familiar with his work, and I knew that the tone is a very specific, quirky humor with a lot of gore <laughs> and a lot of thriller, exciting aspects as well. Um, but for me, honestly, more than anything, I was just terrified because I was speaking French on camera for the first time. And yes, I can, I can speak French at home and I can get it by in France, but it's a whole different thing when, when you have to speak another language on camera. Like I, you, I have so much respect for all the Australian actors that are taking our jobs that have to speak with American accents all the time, I'm always like, yeah, it's fine. It's easy for them. It's hard to have to think about not only, like, what is my character feeling and thinking and doing, but also how are they speaking? Is it correct? Is it the... Like, my accent, um, when I speak French, I'm, I've been told is, like, a southern French accent because that's where my family's from. And in the movie, she's a Parisian woman who, like all of us, we all travel around, so like you're influenced by different things. She spent a lot of time in the United States, or at least that's how I justified maybe the accent not being perfect all the time. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I was more in my head than I normally am acting, because I was worried about a lot of different things. Yeah, so let's talk about that process then of getting the accent to a place that you felt comfortable with. Like what kind of work did you do to do that? Um, I, I got the script and then we started shooting three days later. Yeah. Actually, I think so. Last zero time were, preparation. Last time you were here, you mentioned you're like, I had this project where I found out on Friday I got it, and then like Monday we were filming, and I just was in a foreign country, and that was this project. Yeah, yeah. You just, I, I yeah, you kind of wing it. Well, I didn't really wing it. We had a, I had a dialect coach on set, uh, who was fantastic. Francois is his name, um, appropriately French, very French, and. I do have a base, like I can get by with French, but it was, um, he helped me if I, if I mispronounce something, he would be there. Um, we worked, it's an indie movie, so I didn't have a lot of prep time. And whenever we, we would shoot 12 hours and then I'd on the drive, on the two, dr two hour drive home because the set was two hours away from where we were staying, I would just run the lines in the car with Francois for the next day's work 
And then it would just be a loop. I think I slept like six hours a night. It's like constant work. Yeah. Is that the most involved you've been in like a script like that? It's, it was the most intricate. Yeah. Not the most, I mean, every, every project is so different, but this one definitely was the most exhausting. (laughs) Do you find it uh, harder to speak French in a French accent or to be saying English words with a French accent? Uh, French with the correct dialect. That's the hardest part. Yes, was was the hardest part. Because I can... My my stepdad, my mom's partner, um, is French from Avignon. And my stepsisters and brothers are French as well. So when they speak English to us, they have a very distinct French accent that I've listened to for almost 15 years now. So whenever people... I, I felt like I've been preparing for this role for 15 years, in a way. Um... So that part, the English part, was easier for me because it's just part of my, it's in my ear. And then what was in the script about your character? Because when you look at her, you kind of see the Uma, Pulp Fiction, you know, nod with the haircut. She's an artist. She's French. But, like, who is she in this story? Why is she an important part of Lucky? You know, I'd never thought about the hair. Really? Uh, Yeah, that wasn't intentional. That was just, um, that was actually my idea. I wanted to cut it. I had wanted to cut it anyway. Yeah. It's and a very French style. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I like transforming physically as well as emotionally for every role. And so it just felt right to me. Afterwards, obviously, people reminded me about the, the, Emma, the Uma Thurman thing. Yeah. And let's talk about the rest of the cast. Uh, Crispin Glover plays this really over-the-top um, assassin. Yes. And he is, and his French is not as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we we all got the roles really really late in the game, um, and he did not spend fifteen years with <laughs> family members. <laughs> but I thought he did a good job. No, he did. But I feel like that's also part of his character, where he's so crazy that he's committing to something that yeah yeah he may not be I, real. I think yeah, I think they say that yeah. That he like he, yes, it's like funny. I don't think he's really French. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you get to see him on set at all? Did he stay in that character? You know, a lot of people are asking me this about Crispin. Like, what was he like? What is his, like, thing? And is he as scary as he was? Because he plays such a creep. And he does typically have these sort of creepy roles. He always kind of plays that role. Yeah. Um, I was nervous about that and was very uh, surprised to find out that he is actually extremely, extremely sort of docile and sweet and, like, kind of... His temperament is very gentle. That's good to know. That. Yeah. I'm happy that he's not that yeah, much you, of a creep in real life. You know what? You're, you're, you're good to interview him. He will not kill you. Okay, good. He's, he's been have... here before, and I was like, I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> I'm just, like, really afraid. Ever since, I think it was, like, Charlie's Angels, I was like, I can't. I know. that was Yeah, that's really what I remember good. him from. He's really good in it. Yeah. Speaking of, you do uh, some action and running in this. And Hold on. I have to fix my... Let, let's see. There we go. I like, can see it on the cameras over there, and it's oh, driving It looks good from this angle. <laughs> okay. Let's give it like a deep lean. Thank there you. you go. Oh, let me just lean back. Lean back. Just lean back. Go. Can I take my shoes off? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, if you will, I will. <laughs> These are very uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I wasn't. But okay. well, mine have straps and I stuff. It's a little more thing. complicated. Um, what were we talking about? I forgot. Yeah. The movie. Yeah. Lucky Day. Lucky. It's called Lucky Day. It's called Lucky Day. I we were talking quote. about Crispin and his performance. Yes. Also, Luke, your co-star, plays Red. Yep. Uh, what was it like working with him? Uh, Luke and I have been friends for a while, so we were both excited uh, when we got the call. I think I can't remember if I called him or if he called me, but one of us was like, "Yo, I just got this offer. Are you gonna do it? I'll do it if you do it." And then we did it. <laughs> so, is it more fun to work with an actor who you have like friendship with? Um, I, I, yeah, I, th- I mean, you, it's it's a luxury that we don't often get to have. <laughs> I mean, you don't really get to choose who you work with. Um, you end up becoming really good friends with a lot of people that you might not think that you would if you don't know them, but um, it definitely deepens the relationship, and we became even closer friends after this process. Yeah. What was the vibe like on set? Because it is a pretty intense film. Like, I feel like the action is intense, the dialogue's intense. Was it just sort of a chill set? Um, just trying to remember. It was so traumatizing. Yeah, when I blocked <laughs> a lot of it out. <laughs> or I was so tired, I mean. Um, no, it was... Yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I honestly can't, I, I don't know. I don't remember because I was so focused. Like, in in other roles, I'm able to just, like, make crack jokes in between takes. And in this case, I was so, like, I couldn't, I had to, like, stay in the accent the whole time. I'd never done that before. I was, like, all those people I used to make fun of, I, like, turned into them. 
It was really a sad low moment for me. <laughs> well, I, I think that's really interesting. As you said, it was an obstacle that you hadn't faced before. So yeah. I understand why you took it so seriously. Uh, but you stayed in the accent the entire time? Not when we called rap. Okay. But on set, yes. I had to like respond to people in the accent because I couldn't. It would just it was it messed with my brain too much to go back and forth, and I'd make more mistakes if I would just speak in my normal American slash Canadian slash Bulgarian slash whatever this accent is. <laughs> so that was a real challenge for you. I like hearing that. Is that something else that drew you to this role? Then is that it was going to be something that completely took you out of your element? Hundred percent. Yeah, I yeah. love that kind of stuff. I mean, if it that's how I make my decisions. If it is equal parts um, exciting as it is scary. That's a definite yes for me. I remember talking to you about fam. Same thing. And you were like having that live studio audience and the timing of doing that primetime comedy scared you and then you just leapt into it. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? Okay, <laughs> let's do it. What did you learn from that experience now that it's ended uh, that you'll move forward with or that you'll take into a, another project? It definitely strengthened my comedic yeah. timing and uh, made me more confident in comedy. I, I had so much fun on that. And I, I think that Tone and I will just like keep trying to work with each other over and over again because we have such a good vibe. And he's super funny. He's I just saw him in The Weeknd. I haven't seen uh, it, but I've seen it. It's the good, trailer. though. He does that perfect kind of like really subtle humor that he does very well. Um, so you'll enjoy it. Just a little recommendation if you need one for The I'm, Weeknd. I'm on it. I'm all um, it. You're also moving behind the camera, which I thought was... <laughs> do you just want to take the coat off? Maybe, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me hold your mic. You got it? I'm so glad this is live. On That's all right. <laughs> Should I put on the jacket? No, just like drape it. Just drape it? We're... Yeah, just like throw it. Whatever. Yeah. We're getting comfortable over here. Does anyone have pajamas I can change into? PJs? <laughs> okay. That works. Oh, Jesus. Don't put it on the floor. I know, I know. Come on, I Nina, bad, give it here. But it's I like... got it. Here, give it to me. Now my bra's showing. Nina, can I have your this coat? Is, it's fine. Give it's me. fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Is there like bad luck to put? No, it's bad luck to put your purse on the floor. I have no idea. I mean, it's fine. It'll be. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> well, it looks. The designer won't be happy, but. <laughs> but now we're getting the whole look. There you go. Do you want me to take my shirt off? She that had we'll three distract? outfit changes in one interview. <laughs> I can take my shirt off to distract from the fact that you just took your coat off. Because <laughs> no, my job is to make you feel more comfortable. I'm good. I am you're so good? comfortable. Yes. <laughs> oh, we were transitioning into <laughs> talking about you moving behind the camera, which I was really, really excited to see that you're producing a film called Sick Girl. Uh, I'm a, yeah, I'm an executive producer on the next movie that, um, that I just did. Yeah. And yeah, it's been extremely, extremely exciting to, um, to, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And now that, now that I'm, I mean, this is the first one of many, like I've been developing and producing things for the last couple of years, but this, and it takes so long and it's such a frustrating, but then ultimately once you make it rewarding process, and this is the first one that I actually get to like stamp my name on it. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a labor of love. Everyone involved was really, really passionate about it. Everyone really, really, really wanted to be there. And we believed in the script and the story. And I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah. How did it change your experience? Because you're also starring in it, right? Or you're acting in it. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, so how did that change your experience as an actor that you're also an EP? Um, it's th There's just more on your brain. Like, you're thinking about things that you, that you kind of take for granted normally. Um, it makes me appreciate every producer I've ever worked with more. Um, even the ones that I used to be frustrated with. <laughs> and be like, oh, they were dealing with a lot more than I realized. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just producing is like, it feels like uh, being a firefighter. Like there's constantly going to be fires. Every day you have to like expect that there something will go wrong. And your job is to like, find some water and to throw onto it and like fix it and figure out a, another solution. And then you still have to act. Yeah, I mean, in job. this case, because I was acting, I didn't have as, like I was, that was my priority. And there was other people that were helping with like, it, it was great, it'll, it'll be great. Yeah. I'm excited about it, we'll see. Fingers crossed, you guys. Cautiously optimistic. <laughs> um, d 
has that changed the sort of projects that you want to be a part of? Because you really, I think, in the last couple of years have branched out into a lot of different stuff. Indie films like Lucky Day that are the crime thriller, still comedy, fam, which is a network comedy. Obviously, you did Vampire Diaries. Like, do you love diversifying like that? And then what are you kind of looking forward to maybe tackling next? I've... You're, yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean that's kind of what an actor is, right? That's what we sign up for when we choose our profession. Be different people all the time. Um, I I love challenges, so that's why I love jumping from medium to medium. And honestly, m more mediums are starting to sort of kind of collide. A great film, in my opinion, is a drama with heart that tells a great story, makes you laugh, and makes you cry at the same time. So... That's my goal, just keep making great stories yeah. and playing different characters. And honestly, like you said earlier, the, the, the producing of it all is, is especially poignant and powerful for me right now because I've found my voice and my strength and I'm the one who, I'm, I dr I'm, I'm driving the ship for myself. I'm not like sitting there waiting for someone else to come tell me where to go or like what to do or tell me what I can and what I can't do, because I know what I'm capable of. And a lot of the time when you're sitting on the other end of the phone call waiting for an audition, they're like, oh yeah, no, like the girl from the vampire thing, yeah, this isn't, this isn't a werewolf movie, so we're not, we're, I don't think she'd be right for it. No, not the case, darling. <laughs> I can do all kinds of things. <laughs> you run up and I know that, that still, so though? I'll just like keep making things for myself right. until people. You run up against that still, and then you just like always. Fuck it I all think mind everyone up. does. Everyone does. I mean, like as soon as you do something well, people think of you as that thing. And, and you know what? I have to say, I, I, I'm guilty of it as well. Now that I'm on the other side and we're casting things, I have roles in my scripts, and I'll think of something. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, you know what? Amanda Seyfried, she was so good in that movie. She'll be perfect for this role. And she would. But that doesn't mean it's the only thing she can do. Yeah. You know? Like, we all have to... I need to be more open-minded, yeah. despite my frustrations. I love that. I was actually just talking to Alfonso Ribeiro, who played Carlton mm -hmm. on Fresh Prince. It's like iconic role, and he was like, it kind of ruined my life, like, in a way. And I was like, I've never thought about it like that. So it is... I do love that we're in a place where artists can just create their own stuff, and you're seeing that more and more, I think, specifically with women. Um, sure, just like yeah. writing our own stories and getting behind the camera more and just making more of a presence there. Yeah. It's important. It's super yeah. important and it's super exciting and, and empowering. Yeah, for sure. Before we go, we do have some questions. Uh, the first one comes from Twitter. Build series, hi Nina. Do you have any favorite actor or actress with who you would love to play in the movie, in the movie and you haven't yet so far? Uh, yeah, tons. A lot of actors and actors. Oh, there it is. Um, I would love to be in a film with Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, oh we got a lot of applause. little applause for that. I agree. I just think that she's so uh, unapologetically honest and blunt and real, mm -hmm. and that comes across in all of her performances, and it would be really um, exciting to share the screen with her if I ever had the opportunity. I think we're excited about that, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, the first question in the audience. Hi, Nina. I love you, by the way. Um, if you were an actor, what else would you be? If I was not an actor? Yeah. Um, I'd be taking over the world with Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> I support. <laughs> Which is kind of what I am trying to still do, so. Yeah. yeah. To that, I say, nerf. <laughs> uh, hi. My question is, when you have a really hectic schedule, what do you like to do to keep yourself sane? When I have a very hectic schedule, what do I do? Um, nothing. I, I I took a little like social media break last week because I felt a little overwhelmed and felt like there was too much going on. I was traveling way too much. So I just watched TV with my dog and cooked dinners and stayed off the internet and slept and kind of recharged. Taking care of yourself is just as important as anything else. What did you watch? I watched all of The Politician in one day. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it's really easy to binge. So easy to binge. Yeah. Anything on Netflix is so easy I to know, binge. Right? Yeah. What else did you watch? Just one more thing. Um, what, I watched a lot of documentaries. Ooh. A lot of documentaries. I need some new docs if you have any good ones. Um, American Meme made me very oh, sad. Oh, that one made me super sad with yeah. Paris and... 
Just everyone. Yeah, Josh Ostrowski. Everyone, 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 everyone. It does <laughs> really, it really makes you look at the pressure and just how it can like ruin people's lives. Yeah. To like keep up, just that exactly. pressure to keep up with it. it, it anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, right here. Hi, my name is Isis. Hi, I like your hair. Thank you. I, I'm, I wanted to say I, I'm half Bulgarian. Oh. And um, my question is, if your character could cross over into another show or movie, what would it, you want? This one? To, yeah. Ooh. I mean, because of the comparisons to Pulp Fiction, what if her other long-lost bob-haired <laughs> sister arrived? I could be, like, the evil version for her. <laughs> I don't know. got to be some, like, dark art movie. I was trying to think of, because she's an artist, and her art ends up getting uh, what dark. Was that, what was that Jake Gyllenhaal movie? Right. Where he's an artist? Uh, Nocturnal uh, Animal? No. No. Was it? No. The one where he's a painter? Yeah. No, he's a he's, he's like an art collector yeah. or something? We're the same. Oh, anybody? Does anyone remember? No. That's how good it was. Was it Nocturnal something? No, that was Amy Adams. It was the, But they came out around the same time. Wasn't um, Tony Collette in that one, too? Oh, God. This is going to kill me. Velvet what? Buzzsaw. Yeah, Velvet, Velvet Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw. That's what it was. That's the one. And he was yeah, like so an I art. Guess Chloe, my character, could uh, be one of the painters in that film yeah. that they can bid over her because her work has edge i mean especially at the end towards That's, the end of the movie you gotta That's watch the crazy the end, spoiler that i cannot give you but the end of the movie gets real crazy it makes you change your mind about her art yeah just say that it was always good <laughs> okay she's like uh okay and did we have one more right oh well I got a question. If you could go back to, you started in Degrassi, when I first seen you act was in Degrassi. If that came back, and again, would you play a, another role in Degrassi, if you can, as Mia? Yeah, I would 100% play another role if I could go back. The role would be Jimmy. Um, and then I would go off to become a wildly successful rap artist. <laughs> Watch out, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. <laughs> I mean, you could spit a few bars right now if you really want to just start. That's it for me, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's been lovely. Really appreciate your time. <laughs> On that note, Lucky Day is such a ride. Like I said, the dialogue is so quick, so biting. There's lots of fun gore. Uh, I think fans are really going to enjoy the film, so congrats on it. And if you guys want to check it out, Lucky Day hits theaters this Friday, October 11th. Put your hands together for Nina Dobrev. <laughs> 